Hello and welcome back to the channel. Um, this is my mate's uh, Full Focus Mark II. It's a friend of mine, um, Rick, and he's been having trouble that um, the car keeps going into limp home mode and also he's having difficulty starting it. Uh, when we had a look at it the other day, we thought it was probably the battery that was failing, so we changed the battery and that hasn't uh, resolved the issue. So we're going to have another go at it again right now. So using Forescan, we've had a quick look at the errors, and if you have a look on here, um, I'm getting uh, quite a lot of uh, errors from a lot of the different modules, but there is a common factor that is saying the signal is above the uh, maximum threshold. So the error is that the uh, signal is far too high, and um, that can happen if you lose the terminating resistors, uh, on one end of the CAN bus. Now check out my video that I did a long time ago all about the CAN system. And you will see that uh, the CAN bus uh, starts at the instrument cluster. So I think we could have a look at the instrument cluster with the potential that there might be a break uh, in the connection there, possibly a bad solder joint that could be causing this. If you lose the terminating resistor then the signal becomes high on the CAM bus, and that's what's being reported. Right, we're going to take out the instrument cluster and have a look at it. So the first thing is you need to pull out this bottom piece here, like that. And this reveals uh, two scr torque screws, one there and one just here, which we're going to release. Right, so with the uh, torque screws now out, easing the plastic out, there we are, we got it, look at that. Right, turning over, and just in the back here is the multi-way connector, release. Careful does it, there we go, all the way up. and out it comes. Right, and that then allows the whole instrument panel out. Right, well, we're going to start by uh, taking the back cover off and if you look um, there's actually nine of these little tags all the way around the outside. There, there, there and there. So we're just going to gently pop them off with a screwdriver and off comes that cover. Fantastic. So to get the uh, front cover off there are five little brown plastic clips that you ease out with the uh, with a screwdriver. And it's out. Here we go. Right, lifting out and we're presented with the dials. So, turn over, discard that part. Our next move then is to uh, take the needles off. Right. Gonna have to twist it. So anti-clockwise, very gently twisting. There's two. And then I believe it's clockwise for this one. Off that came. And same with that one. And there we are. Let's take this cover off like the man did. Carefully. This is really necessary, but there right, we are. So the uh, next bit is we've got to get this part out, and if we turn over, there's these little uh, twisty bits of metal here, 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 and here. And if I straighten up the twisties like that, and that, and a whole lot 
pops out the other side. Out comes that cover and then really just want to be careful here. We want to be able to take the screen out. Very carefully pull the ribbon. There we go. There's a little release at the bottom there. Um, just lift up this release and the ribbon comes out. Right, now we're going to uh, take off the circuit board. This clips here, 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 here and here. Um, I'm going to pop each of those. There it goes. And there's the circuit board out. So what we're looking for, if we is um, this is where the uh, the multi-way connector joins on, and quite often there's a bit of a strain, and it causes the solder to uh, break. And the trick, I suppose, is put your thumb over the top, waggle and see whether you can feel any pins moving. Yes, I've got one. I've got one right in this corner here that is moving. And that little crack around the pin is enough to cause the, uh, the uh, can system to fail. So, all I've got to do is solder it up. All right, so we're going to very carefully solder up these joints again. Whenever I'm doing this, I usually do them all, not just one. I think of it as good maintenance. Right, there we are. Right, now let's, now let's put the whole thing back together again. So, turning this over, dropping it into place, gentle pressing down so that each of the clips go in. That's all down. Right, turning it over then. Now I want to put the ribbon back in. So, lifting up the latch. Gently push um, in, oh, in you go. There we go, it's thin. Drop the latch down. Drop the LCD back on top. Then we're going to put the cover in, which just slots over the top, like like that. Turning over, going to just put a little twist on each of these. last one there we are that's all in nicely now as well right my next step is put the uh, dials back on so just going to pop the dials back on again just very carefully that's on there's a little clips just there make sure they're in they're in Right, now we've got to put these uh, back in. So, trying to do the reverse of what I did in the first place. 
pressing down and in this case clockwise twist so it lines up on zero We might have to uh, check the calibration of this before we uh, put the whole thing back together again. So these ones went anti-clockwise. Like that. And... Like that. Now, I think before I reassemble the whole thing, I want to make sure that this is all zeroed properly. So I'm going to pop it just gently into the car and try it. Click. Right, that one seems right. This one's wrong. Okay. Good. So what I think we're going to do, we've had a bit of fun calibrating this thing, is I'm going to put the needles back on with it all powered up. Like, like that. Now if I start, that looks good. Okay, I'm going to do the same with the temperature gauge. We should, with everything's off, it should be reading zero. About there. And the fuel gauge, again, should read zero. With everything off like that. Not happy with that one. Pull off and just switch on again just for a moment. That looks good. Reset. And now I'm gonna I think it's all right, like that. that. Looks like a better way of doing it is to um, take the needles off, um, reconnect the instrument panel, and then um, put the needles back on so they read zero. And then hopefully when you power up, everything should read fine. So let's just restart again. And temperature gauge is nominal, slightly above a thousand, but then it's coolish engine. Um, and the fuel gauge is reading, well, just above zero, about a quarter of the tank. Hopefully that looks all right. Right, now we've calibrated the, um, the instrument again, just by zeroing everything. Uh, let's put the front cover back on, which should be very easy by popping it over the top, lining up the lugs here and here, and they'll be the same on the other side, and then just gently pushing down. That feels as though, there it is. Clip, clip. Uh, top ones haven't quite gone yet, I don't think. And turn it over. Looking on this side. No, actually they've gone in. Oh no. There we are. That's all in there nicely now. Right, so the next stage is we just got to put a cover onto this back. Uh, I'm just going to tilt up a little bit like that. There we go. And that is that way around. And again, you've got these little luggy things if you just gently push down. That's all back in now. Now we can put it back into the car.
Uh, power on. Temperature's nominal. So after reassembling the instrument panel back into the car, just to double check that everything was calibrated correctly, we took the car for a run using a GPS, which gave us the uh, miles per hour as well, uh, just to make sure the speedo was right. Well, there we are. We've been around the block. Um, haven't got any more faults come back onto the car. Everything seems to be working just fine. Um, if you enjoyed this video, then please uh, give me a thumbs up. Think about subscribing. I occasionally do these videos. Uh, leave some comments as well. Um, I always read the comments and um, I find them interesting. Anyway, I think we found the problem this time, although we did accuse the battery to start with and that didn't work. Uh, but this time I could definitely feel a little break uh, behind that pin and, and soldering it up. It should now survive for the lifetime of the car. Um, anyway, that's it for now and I'll catch you on the next one.